Peru is one of the most beautiful and fascinating countries in the world. So it's not a surprise that the country is a dream destination for many travelers, young and old. The country of around 30 million people is located on the Pacific coast of South America and has borders with five other countries, Ecuador, Colombia, Brazil, Bolivia and Chile. The country has something to offer everyone who visits. For eco-tourists, Peru's natural scenery is as varied as it is beautiful. Without leaving the country, you can travel from the beach to the desert and from the soaring Andes mountains to the depths of the Amazonian rainforest. You can experience trekking through the wilderness and encountering stunning wildlife. And it's not just the natural environment that is extraordinary in Peru. Cultural tourists will enjoy the vibrant modern cities like Lima. In old cities like Cusco, you can learn more about the ancient Inca culture of Peru in fascinating museums and palaces. And there's the chance to buy Peruvian handicrafts and art at one of the many markets. And in isolated areas of the country, there are some of the most astonishing man-made sites in the world. Ancient and mysterious Inca settlements. And the amazing floating homes on Lake Titicaca. But there's one place in Peru that has become the ultimate destination for adventurous travelers from around the world. It's a place that has been voted one of the seven wonders of the modern world and is an iconic symbol of Peru, with nearly a million visitors every year. It's Machu Picchu, the lost city of the Incas. Machu Picchu is located at 2,430 meters above sea level in the mountains about 80 kilometers from the ancient Inca capital of Cusco. In July 2011, Machu Picchu celebrated the 100th anniversary of its rediscovery by an American explorer called Hiram Bingham, who worked at Yale University. While Bingham's discovery brought the hidden site to the attention of the world, the mysterious origins of Machu Picchu stretch much further back into history. Explorer and writer Hugh Thompson has spent a lot of time in Peru exploring the Machu Picchu area. I first went to Peru almost 30 years ago and I went because someone told me that there was a ruin near Machu Picchu which had been found once and then lost. And it was such a strange story, this idea of a mislaid ruin, that I thought I'd go and try and find it again with a group of friends. So I went off on my first expedition. I think one of the most extraordinary things about Machu Picchu, which is the greatest of all the Inca sites or ruins, is that we have only known about it for a hundred years, which seems extraordinary if you think how important it is. If you compare that to the pyramids in Egypt or the other great ruins of the ancient world, um, it's incredible that Machu Picchu should have been lost, so to speak, um, for so long. Machu Picchu was described by Hiram Bingham as the lost city of the Incas and we still know very little about this amazing place. We don't know exactly when Machu Picchu was built because of course there's no written record, but we think around 1450 to 1470, some 50 years or so before the Spanish arrived in 1532. And then there's no record at all of Machu Picchu until 1911 
when the American explorer Hiram Bingham discovered it. So what exactly was Machu Picchu? Was it really a city built in the mountains? We think that Machu Picchu was built as a winter estate for the Inca emperor, Pachacuti, and his court, so that they could escape from the winter cold of Cusco, their capital, which is much higher than Machu Picchu, and come down to the warmer climate uh, for a few months in winter. Seeing the ruin today, it's almost impossible to imagine how it was lost for hundreds of years. But there's an unusual explanation. So with Machu Picchu, we think that when the emperor who built it, Pachacuti, died, uh, it was then owned, so to speak, by his mummified body. Um, and the next emperor had to build a different palace somewhere else. So Machu Picchu was forgotten, if you like, and lost. So how did Hiram Bingham rediscover Machu Picchu? Hiram Bingham was not an archaeologist himself. His great speciality uh, was Spanish. He spoke Spanish well and he used his knowledge of Peruvian books and Peruvian histories um, to give him clues as to where he might find Inca ruins. He started off down this valley from Cusco, down a road that had only just been opened, so most people hadn't travelled that way before, and he was very lucky. He was lucky because he bumped into a local farmer who said, if you go up that hill, senor, you will see some very interesting ruins. In this case, it was a very steep hill that Bingham had to climb with the farmer to have a look. None of the rest of his expedition believed the farmer or went with him, so Bingham went up on his own and discovered Machu Picchu. Bingham returned to the site the following year. He explored the area and took many photographs that were published in newspapers and magazines around the world. Hiram Bingham wrote a great deal about Machu Picchu, but his most famous book is called Lost City of the Incas, and it's probably the one most people have heard of, and that phrase has almost entered the language. And he used the book to paint a very romantic picture of Machu Picchu, and maybe that's why so many people still want to go there today. For many tourists today, the journey to Machu Picchu is almost as important as being at the palace. If you want to visit Machu Picchu today, you can either go the easy way, which is to take a train and then a bus up to the ruins, or you can do what the Incas themselves would have done, which is to take the Inca Trail. The Inca Trail is a route the Incas built themselves to travel from Cusco to Machu Picchu. The amazing high-altitude track takes four or five days for the modern visitor to walk. Walkers need to prepare well for the journey, or they can get into trouble. Because they are walking through forests and along narrow paths at high altitudes, the Inca Trail is not for the faint-hearted or unfit, and walkers need to plan their journey well in advance. The Peruvian authorities have restricted numbers on the Inca Trail to conserve it, so only about 500 people a day are allowed to be on the trail. It is a difficult uh, route. You have to cross mountain passes of over 15,000 feet, so many suffer from altitude sickness, and it's physically extremely demanding. There's a great deal of up and down. So what advice would Hugh give walkers? The advice I'd give anyone who's considering walking the Inca Trail is that obviously you need to be fit, it's a tough route, but also you need to acclimatise to the altitude. You need to get used to the altitude for quite a few days before you begin the trail itself. The good news about doing the Inca Trail is that you usually have porters who are carrying all the heavy stuff for you, so that you yourself might just be carrying a small day pack, uh, and you'll have a camp in the evening. It's often very comfortable and often very, very good food. 
While Machu Picchu is an amazing place to visit, for Peruvians it is much more than a tourist attraction. It's an icon, a symbol of their national identity, and provides a very clear link to their incredible Inca heritage. I think one of the reasons that so many people want to visit Machu Picchu, I mean along of the pyramids, it's one of those must-see destinations, is that um, Machu Picchu, you feel when you go there that you're touching a completely different culture, a different way of thinking, a different way of life, one that's still quite mysterious, of course, and one that we don't fully understand.